Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at a little sneak peek of what is to come with President Francis Parker Yaki. I'll tell you how I got him, and whether or not I use cons commands, but regardless, we have the event in front of us, the Yaki inauguration. The nation stands in shock. Riot police line the streets of Washington, D.C., and Francis Parker Yaki climbs the steps of the U.S. Capitol building to be sworn in as President of the U.S., Flanked by uneasy Secret Service agents, the new leader of the National Progressive Party strides to the podium, brimming with confidence. Against all odds, his plans have come to fruition, and America waits his words. Those surrounding the podium are of less distinction than expected for an inauguration of such importance. The RDs have boycotted his swearing in, and much of his own party refuses to attend. Foreign observers are also notably sparse, with the exception of a small delegation from the Reich making the guest list mostly composed of his most avid supporters. Lois de Lafayette Washburn, Yaki's campaign manager, smiles for the cameras as the enigmatic donor, Harold Keith Thompson, deftly avoids them. The newly sworn in Vice President Louis uh, Byers shakes hands and signs autographs for brown shirted well wishers, reveling in his candidate's victory, while Press Secretary Willis Carto and freshman representative Te Fred Huntley make conversation and Admiral John. Cromelin's imperious gaze scans the crowd for signs of danger. The crowd is composed in three parts. First, there are those who's, who have sympathies and lie with the underdog candidate who has overcome decades of struggle to reach this moment and wish to see America molded in his vision. Second, those who have turned out to exercise the First Amendment right, fearing that they may be stripped away before the next inauguration. Finally, a third line of Capitol Police divides the two groups. Shouts of protest and acclamation rise over each other, struggling to be heard. As Yaki ascends, the then only grows into a storm of discontent, rising with the wind that flutters through the pages of his speech. The Chief Justice extends a book to the Speaker, Imperium, Yaki's masterpiece of geopolitics and cultural theory. Ignoring the contemptuous look of the defeated judge, one hand upon the book, he repeats the oath. The President retracts his hand, turns towards the crowd, and begins to speak. The American dream does not come to those who fall asleep, in which we remove the last bastion of liberty and replace the American malaise with American despair. It is what it is. A general solution. Of principles and manners will more surely overthrow the liberties of America than the whole force of the common enemy. From Samuel Adams. It happened here. So we have eight focuses here that are each 14 days as a little sneak peek. But the presidency. The American organism was born degenerate, the product of the twin diseases of miscegenation and liberalism. I apologize, I always mispronounce that word. One series of Newman in particular poisons the American mind. E. Pluribus Unum. That Unum has been destroyed by the many. It has been embezzled by the <coughs> religious folk called Jews. It has been raped by the <coughs> Negro. It has been barbarized by the Slav. This was no accident. The disease of cultural distortion that afflicts America is a, con is a construction. An archaic Grecian statue marred by those who subtly disfigured her face until it became indistinguishable from that of a beast. She is Western civilization, the ultimate manifestation of high culture. President Yaki is a sculptor that will polish, chisel, and carve away until she is restored to her glorious perfection. And we get the first day. Now, I'll be honest here. Oh, actually, ooh, let's read about this. With bated breath and a host of emotions, millions across the world tuned into the inauguration of Francis Parker Yaki. Joy, rage, hope, and hatred calling the global reaction controversial may well be the understatement of the decade. In the Nazi-dominated regions of Europe, the news was met with an extremely positive response, as many were happy to see such a like-minded individual be born or be sworn in. In the OFN in Japan, the news was met s somewhat less well, with many now wary of a new militant America. It was mostly divisive with the U.S., with many protests of evolving into rise by nightfall. Regardless of the reactions, Yaki now sits in the Oval Office. By his hinting at media crackdowns, many Americans await a totalitarian reign of iron, while others await coming days of greatness. The last light of freedom goes out. So, uh, actually, if you see the United States right here, it's actually a darker blue color than what the normal U.S. is, which is just a little bit different. Also, the Gross Germanische Reich is here, but they annexed all of Oslan, and they restored the reporters of the Ukraine, and of course, they're led by balding dude, Martin Vorman, or Marty, as some might call him. And the next focus. A uh, most loyal cabinet, the principles of cultural vitalism, remain unsecured in the American mind complex. The upper echelons of the American super political organism are infested with establishment financiers and promoters of cultural retardation. True ethical, political, cultural realization can only come with the appointment of our own officials, who those who will smoke out the rats that lurk in synagogues, mansions, and banks. The obstacles to this step are immense. Our power in Congress is greatly limited. Even the majority of the staunch segregationists have decried the election of President Yaki. An entire legion of anti-of- 
an entire legion of cultural distorters have been shocked into extreme anti-Western and negativism measures by our swift rise to power and will do our do their best to obstruct our path to supremacy. However, we possess a stronger will to power and remain free of the byproducts of rationalist thought that have poisoned the minds of America's political class. We shall empower men who truly embody the spirit of the age to direct the divisions of the American political unit and ensure their ascendance over the objections of the debased and profane. We shall create a cabinet of those who are bearers of the idea. Neri the uncle lifts this shadow. And we should get an event for the first day. White House Press Briefing Room, oh, 0900 hours, and we are very pleased to announce, after a long period of obstruction and mudslinging by Washington bureaucrats, the confirmation of Admiral John Cromwellin as Secretary of Defense by the Senate, a proud servant of the American people who have come to join us to answer questions about the administ administration's defense policy. Tom Fleming, National Review. What does the president plan to do regarding the disciplinary problems such as the incident aboard the Patrick Henry last week? Well, Tom, with the state of the world as it is, discipline in the armed forces is essential, especially on critical assets such as our ballistic missile subs. We will not tolerate anti-white activism when it interferes with the operation of military vessels, not when we face an existential threat across the Pacific. Just ask Secretary Oliver. 2201 C Street, U.S. Department of State. 11.58 hours. And I want these instructions regarding new immigration regulations sent out to all of our embassies by the end of the day. Harris, give me my coffee. I want to be in top shape for the call with the Germ Germania 1500 Pennsylvania Avenue. Treasury building, 1404 hours. I'll get you those reports soon, Herr Fisher. We've still got a great deal of organization to do, and your patience is appreciated. Your superiors will be not be disappointed. And as I've said before, cooperation is in both your interest and those of the president. 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, the White House, 1726 hours. The cabinet being confirmed is only a setback for the party politicians, not a victory of any importance for us buyers. Uh, the enemy of the West have entrenched themselves deeply in the American psyche, as we have seen in our first days. You must continue your efforts to disseminate effects over the party propaganda that dominates and restrains the American mind organism. Our work is far from done. So, as I was trying to say, okay, so with this, I'll be completely honest here. I had to use console commands, get Yaki in, because I played. So, let's trying to get Yaki fair and square. So we started with Nixon, right? So then we went and, or this I went and got Wallace. And with Wallace, I got impeached. With Curtis LeMay, I, well, under Wallace, we actually repealed civil rights and forced segregation, states' rights, stuff like that. And then with Curtis LeMay, I reenacted civil rights and got Barry Goldwater elected. With Barry Goldwater, I destroyed any sense of unity between the Republicans and Democrats as well as, uh, of course, the NPP basically collapsed under, like, Wallace and LeMay, basically. Uh, I pretty much lost every single war I possibly could, got involved as, into as many wars as possible, and then we had the event with Barry Goldwater in which we had the elections. And we'll read this in just a little bit. And with Barry Goldwater, okay, so, like I said, I use console commands for this, because this is pretty much about the same support we had, about 28-29% support for Yaki. However, it still wasn't enough. Okay, so I thought, you know what? We can't get Yaki yet. Let me try console command, in which I use the ideology boost or ideology modifier for values, in which I gave Yaki 100% of all party popularity or party ideology. 100%. This was all brown. It was not enough to get Yaki into power. Barry Goldwater at 100% for Yaki still became president. So, the only way I did this was by using it the same ideology console command at 500. So even at 100%, Yaki still won't win the presidency, which was crazy. But regardless, I just want to be open and transparent with you guys that I had used console commands to get Yaki in because getting Yaki in is nearly impossible. But anyways, Neri the Uncle lifts this shadow. This is CBS Evening, Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening tonight. The U.S. Senate has taken robust measures in ensuring the confirmations of the cabinet of the president. A maverick of his time as the first member of the NPP's American National Vanguard to reach the presidency. The day went as follows. Taking a deep breath, Cronkite continued. Firstly, Vice President Louis T. Byers spoke to the Senate, declaring that today is a great day for Americans all across the country. As we don the mantle of security for statehood and autonomy against the threat of the Zionists, the communists, and so many other dangerous actors lurking in the shadows, as they reach out to brainwash the youth into this deranged and accursed leftism, which has come to dominate us today. Cronkite's face furrowed as he continued to readjust his glasses while he spoke as a pang of fear tore at his heart. After a rousing confirmation of four Secretary of State, Revilo P. Oliver, Treasury Secretary Harold Keith Thompson, um, addressed the Senate announcing that I have been 
within the wise prerogatives of the president, chosen to take the mantle of managing the American people's economic strength. No one has said that it will be an easy job. However, while may some may want to tear it down, I, with the president armed with the vice president's buyer's fire, President Ol or Secretary Oliver's boldness, and soon to be Secretary Cromwell's strength, will bring this nation to unity and strength. Cronkite's hand wiped across his face slowly as the black crackling of the screen was met with silence on the acclaimed reporter. And finally, we <clears throat> we saw Rear Admiral John G. Cromwell take his stand to the, the Senate today, as he said. It is with many thanks that I find myself appointed to take action as Secretary of Defense over this fine nation's military. Jews and liberals have shaken our structure to the core. And it is with hope that the President and I can work together to uh, <clears throat> bring security to us all. Cronkite stared long and hard to a space unseen by the rolling cameras, brightened, by, brightening the living rooms of Americans, now shrouded in the night's darkness. As a tear befell his cheek, the iron-willed reporter found his throat crushed, unable to speak any but eight more words. God bless the United States of America, and good night, America. Oh my goodness. Holy cow, if you want to read this, go right ahead. That's a, uh, that's a lot of words. Wow. That's, that's a lot of words. And we have buyers here. And I'll be right back real quick. Alright everyone, sorry about that, but a subservient party. Party politics is a farce invented to ensure the primacy of finance capitalism over truly motive forces. However, we are forced to work with a political organism afflicted with this disease as the forces of history have united these desperate threads of political stupidity into an amorphous grotesquerie that calls itself the National Progressive Party. Why the distorters have tolerated us in the ranks for so long is unclear. We should not repeat their mistake. We have served as allies, or they have served as allies of convenience from the most lofty party politician to the most miserable activist, but the alliance is convenient no longer. Their petty feud with other anti-Western political complex was merely an exploitable facet in the war. In time, they shall be expelled from our ranks in time. Party politics shall be a thing of the past, but for now we require only absolute obedience. I want to talk about and the overreach. Liberalism, that pervading a horrible weakness, that great rotting disease form of orgas organismic organismic tranquility that heckler of the cosmic rhythms governing all life must be stamped out it represents in fact it is the destroyer of the american and european mind complex this disease is universally found within both the masters of economy who manipulated the controls of the so-called pluralistic state and the profanum vulgus who compose a detritus upon which the culture bearing stratum should lie instead the harvesters of cultural stupidity agitate the soil in pursuit of dilution of the high culture the machinations and schemes by which they agitate are universal to America. Through the extension of the live democracy and the curse of liberty to the backwards races, they accomplish disruption of the failing authority of Western civilization. Through the promotion of anti-spiritualist values and primitive intimidations or imitations of the culture, they distance the young idea bearers from the birthright of their original soil. This mechanism must be disrupted and broken apart if we are to preserve a future for the ailing superorganism. Readjusting the government's electoral expenses to the areas that are less polluted by liberal negativists will enable this. We cannot dethrone the economic prime movers yet, but they are no more exempt from the ethico-spiritual forces that affect all great thought movements. Very interesting. Or maybe not, but very interesting regardless. Rats in the walls, Wittenfield. You hear about Tolson resigning? I didn't think he'd go so easily, not with the way things have been going. Kessler. He's been here a long time, and with Hoover gone, well, he's been meaning to retire. I'm sure you know he was hunting down Nazi saboteurs on the East Coast back in the 40s like everyone else in the Bureau. Don't think we'll be doing much of that now that we've got one in the White House, Wittenfield. It doesn't make sense to me if he hates him so much. Of course it does. They're already killing democracy. Anyone can see that. No, he won't stick around long. Folks will see him for what he, what he is soon enough. No chance he gets reelected. Till then, we've got to do our jobs as best as we can and make sure that there's no abuse of power. You're not seriously thinking about staying on, are you? He's already turning the Bureau into his personal Gestapo. Why else would we be investigating the leftists in the party? Well, you got to watch out for the next two. Who, who knows what they're going to try now that Yaki's elected? Yeah. Famed communist scoops Jackson and Margaret Chase Smith need to be investigated. You stay here. You're supporting the White House and destroying democracy. Calm down, Harry. You don't want to be saying those sort of things here. Not so loudly anyways. Jeez. You think they've started spying on the Bureau already? Suppose it doesn't matter what I say then. Or did they tap you for it, seeing as you're all for bootlicking? Hey, don't blame me. I voted for McNamara. Uh-oh. FBI internal audio recording dated 1. 7th of March, 1973. There shall be no fifth, fifth column. 
and party unity has gone up to 28%. Still, cool. Any take. Honestly, for this little episode, research doesn't matter, so just choose whatever we want. Very nice. And the Oval Reach. Also in this world, unlike my Jean Kirkpatrick presidency little sneak peek, the Republic of Russia has been formed under Sakharov, which I believe is supposed to be like Tomsk, or came from Tomsk, so. Formation, yeah, it's formation of the Salon, so this is from Tomsk, and they actually united Russia. So, end the overreach. But we shall unleash the South. The southern region of America was the birthplace of the European Revolution of 1861 to 1865. Though defeated by the traitor Lincoln in this conflict, the Western culture in America was merely suppressed and soon returned to dominance in that region. Since then, it has been suppressed across the land by the weak liberal party politicians that impose a mongrel culture imitation. We shall end this destructive mistake and make the, the epicenter of the high culture in America free to dominate the backwards, or backwards races and the culture retarders that infest this land. This action will enrage the majority of our enemies but, and the economy rulers and propaganda masters, but those who are still healthy from a cultural pathological perspective will understand the importance of this period and the great struggle of history. Their representatives and the American super political organism will support our policies and initiatives. Or initiates, or initiatives, even more. And the outer peoples will find themselves once again under the watchful eyes of the West. Urgent message. The rotary dial went down, then up, then down, up, and down again. Ten digits in ten seconds. If Regulus Phillips wasn't worrying about himself sick, he'd have averaged half that for a number he'd been calling for five years straight. One second became two, then three, then ten. The colored man gripped the cherry red receiver of a little tighter before someone picked up. Sighing, he said, Sarah, Reg, I'd like to get Boss Evan on the line. Something's come up, and the board's got to act soon. And who's this supposed to be? Eyes widened. The voice wasn't Evan's secretary. Heck, it wasn't even a woman at all. Uh, this Mr. Regulus? Regulus Phillips, sir. He stammered. I was told this is a landline for Commissioner Evan Winters' office. May I speak to him? Winters? The race trainer? Thick and twangy chuckles carried throughout the static. Fella won't be bothering nobody no more. I'll give you that. Ice crept into Phillips' veins as the voice drawled out his enlightenment. So that's how it is. Well, let me tell you something. Bubba. Whatever burning questions you got, the answer is probably yes. Ballot drop-offs are being shut down across Cook County. Gangbangers are getting their votes taken from them. And no more couriers fiddling with that fancy mail, too. Either show up like a man or your vote doesn't matter. But you don't... But don't you worry your pretty little head, boy. It's all for a good cause. The voice hung up with the kind words and slur. Voting is a privilege. Our support will increase. The NPP grows further divided, which doesn't even matter, because I think I've already showed you this. Go ahead, yep. And cool. Well, maybe not cool, but maybe cool. Going 31% in Cook County. That is Chicago up here. Gotta love it. Unleash the South. Oh, yes, we will. At least for these about 100 days. It's actually about 112 days worth of content. So, not bad. Anything else about uh, Africa fell apart? Africa fell apart. Uh, in this little episode, Italy is in the OFN once again. And Iran is in Einheit's Pact. And as well as Norway still. And... France, well, what's remaining of the French state, is also in the OFN. Quite different. And Spain is, or Iberia is just a giant mess. The Spanish Republic, Falange of Spain, they don't have any content yet, but that's fine. Look how happy this guy is. He's fighting a war, and so is this guy. He's like, he's maybe putting on a smile, but maybe. Unleash the South. In which were the levers of power. The election of President Yaki was not just victory over the miserable party politicians who serve extra European interests, but a critical victory in the unremitting war for the domination of European people and race. This war has been unconsciously fought since the beginning of history between the traitors and distorters of European culture, and the spirits of the age that embodies the idea of Western civilization. Now that we are at the forefront of the American political mind, we have wrested away partial control of the levers that control the distribution of information. In due time, we shall end the production of the cinema pictures and other forms of propaganda that extol negativism and anti-European sentiment, which compel the American political organism to surgically self-extract distorters from within. Finally, we shall enable the purification of the culture-bearing stratum by eliminating the values placed in the following rationalist mistakes. Messagination, cosmopolitanism, liberalism, pacifism, tolerant choice, freedom. Upon this foundation of power, we shall rise to a stand above the cultureless, triumphant in this great battle of history, Imperium Ascendant. The fists shall tighten, more national socialism, our academic base begins to worsen. Well, actually, right now, mass mechanization is going down, poverty is getting quite a bit worse, but professional arms is getting better, so then enter tyranny. There had been so much hope last year. The Congressional Caucus meeting would have been overwhelming enough for any freshman representative. It was worse for this few new C 
NPP delegates. Jackson's defeat in the primaries had shattered the party and caused a slump in turnout, and the center had suffered the most. Pat Schroeder of the Colorado First had barely won in the recount with a split vote between her, the RD candidate, and her primary opponent who had refused to acknowledge his defeat. The right had given warm welcomes and firm handshakes, but the vanguard congressmen had not, despite being far from firmly controlling the party, they seemed to be in no hurry to reach across the aisle. In these halls of Washington, where conspiracy and scheming against the West has become the order of the day, we have removed the corruptors from the levers of power and now bring them out to the observation and scrutiny of all clear-minded American observers. The president has been speaking for some time, a title ill-suited for the unimposing man with a pompous and arrogant manner of speech, but an unmistakable knack for telling people what they wanted to hear. He almost looked fearful as he spoke, despite his power, as if one slip of the tongue might bring this regime crashing down. They had no majority without the party. They needed every vote they could get. And we hold this truth to be self-evident, that after a long train of abuses and usurpations, an usurpation of our own has become necessary, and with your support we've achieved it. Regardless of what the legalities impose on us by traitors demand, we shall no longer dictate to our southern brethren how they ought to enforce their laws. And the furious sound of applause echoed throughout the halls, and hope was extinguished. The will to power stronger than a thousand votes. The righteous shall be allowed to inherit their earth. Ooh. Interesting. And also, the budget's not too bad. It's not too hard to get down the national debt, at least a little bit, so. Let's see. Interfered with German operations. Well, since we are playing with Yaki... Cutting a deal, that's from President Wallace still. CIA, we're going to target Republicans. Death of a Supreme Court Justice. If you'd like to read about this one, go right ahead. It doesn't It doesn't really matter. Fill the vacancy. Operation commenced. Thank you very much. Bears of the Flame. Oh, that's on fire. A miracle is born sick and infection has spread throughout every aspect of the body. A degenerate virus of the nation's mind organism. This occurs most strongly in the southern organ, where the forces of history have Placed the most loyal soldiers of Western civilization. These knights of culture truth understand the historical war that even now besets the nation. They know that the age of absolute politics approaches with speed, and their efforts to keep the subject populations inactive politically will aid in our goals as well. For these are not detritus or chaff like most, but men willing to take up arms in direct spiritual action, the finest capitalistic thinking that has dominated America for so long will not dissuade them from their task in victory in the culture politics revolution that will be enshrined into or in importance nearly equivalent to the revolution of 1933 enforced by the spiritual currents of history. It is not the matter or the material matters that will determine our victory over the illness, but our spiritual constitution and will to power. Truly western human material is driven by the spirit of the age, and we shall support it with all we have. The clan, the Aryans, the torchbearers of western civilization and rejectors of cultural distortion all shall receive our full support finally free of the restrictions of the old party politics then the fire they shall rise followed by hopefully another event but the levers of power very interesting everything on fire china modernizes well perhaps the next will be the chinese century well not if President Yaki has something to say about it. The SAFE Act. If the 18th century ideology of equality were actually believed in, there would be no such thing as propaganda, since every man would think quite independently and would resent any attempt whatever to form his mind. This I I ideology, however, is shown precisely by the example of America, the country in which it was adopted with religious fervor to have no correspondence to reality whatsoever. In America, the country where mass thinking, mass ideals, and mass living dominate the collective life, propaganda is a prime form of dissemination of information. There are no publications in America addressed solely to the intellect. A cultural distorting regime rests on its indivisibility, and independent thinking by strong individuals is, is ipso facto hostile to such a regime. Nor are there any publications which purvey only facts. Any facts and any viewpoints are coordinated with their presentation into the ruling propaganda picture. It is imperative that we that the dangers of these publications be brought to the forefront of the Western culture mind apparatus. We must commence the establishment of a new organ in the American super political organism, one instructed in the methods of detecting and destroying propaganda by exposing its lies to the ignorant masses. The common man of the American cult would react ne negatively to naked attempts to dismantle the rational anti-Western institutions. But with our seizure of the levers of propaganda, we possess the ability to cast our laws in whatever light we see fit. A drug clips of a voter sum. How oppressive could the very weather get? Gravis or Thomas Gravios pondered such a question as he continued to breathe the ocean of New Orleanian humidity into his lungs, as he felt the sweat drive down to his hand, clasped 
hands with his girlfriend, Lily Babineau. The brewing storm clouds above proved no use to uplift Louisiana from the terrific heat that struck down upon the South. First vote, first vote, good lord, gonna be fun. I know we missed this past presidential election, but heck, voting for a congressman can't hurt, can it, Lily? Thomas said. Lily nodded and smiled as she felt happy, but the pangs of worry continued to dawn in her as she saw more and more whispering couples heading towards the booth. I mean, just think of it. We got Republicans, Democrats, all sorts of the NPP, I mean. I mean, I know that the President Yaki is not the most popular between us, and I'm not meaning to force you to vote for anybody, Gravo said, before being cut off by a rushing police car blaring a siren. I don't know, Thomas. Are we sure today's going to be a good day for participating within this here election? I know it's important and all, but something just ain't right about all this. I bet you can feel it too, she says, as a rumble of thunderous storm clouds rolled within the distance. Sweat continued to bear down the couple's foreheads as they stopped for a brief moment. Now, sweetie, I know it's nerve-wracking and all, but we gotta do what we can for our country. Both our fathers served our country back in... Thomas? Lily whispered. The two looked forward, and none of the cheery election seasons of the past prepared for them for the sight. No barbecues, no pins, no stickers, no cheers or laughs from the crowds, but only the roaring of helicopters and armed guards roaming about. Between each booth laid an officer in ride gear, bearing the symbols of the American National Vanguard, as the crowd was moved forward with police on each side. Loudspeakers, sirens all blurred out, as lines were monitored, people were monitored. For God's sakes, each vote was monitored. The young couple looked at each other, wanting to back away and run all the way back home, but the shining glimmer of an officer's badge, lined up next to a patch for the vanguard, shone into their eyes as he beckoned them forth. Not even votes are sacred now. For the divided whatever, Georgia add to province clan riots, as well as Alabama and South Carolina. Ooh, that sounds quite interesting. And also, I did say we were talking about the Senate. So we have 26 Yaquis, two far-right MPPs, obviously not far-right enough, and then five far-left MPPs. And actually, it was really cool. If you look at Texas, there's a Democrat that are called George H.W. Bush. Hmm. Hmm. Anyone else around here that we would see is kind of cool? They're all Yaquiites. This, this is really the solid South. Look at that. Look how solid it is. Holy cow. No, no one there that I really re super recognize. Austerity. Yeah. Choosing a Scottish nominee. Is that even an option? A liberal option under Yaki? Not so much. Pick and Looper's still there in Iowa. Vexations of the Vanguard. And actually, we even have people up here too. Of course, they're far left in Massachusetts. And I think that was that is the last focus. So, thump, 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 thump. The door closed. President Yaki's sharp nailed fingers continued to roll up against the wooden desk. Mr. President, I understand the anger you must be feeling. This is obviously a conspiracy drawn up by the brainwashed communist youth of our nation. Vice President Byers said, Anger? Anger nonsense. Vice President Byers, you failed to understand me if you misconstrue my soul's perturbedness if you construct it into the childlike frustration felt like men such as Secretary Crumlin and all the inbred patriots scurrying about the Midwest and South, Vice President. Rather, this Judeo-Bolshevik machination, this rebellious child sprung from the seeds of democracy, liberalism, and the Constitution itself, this instigates not the... not childlike tantrums within my soul, but a greater understanding as to the frustrations to be held in reshaping this world. The vanguards prepared to mantle the mission of establishing national socialism in the likes of this gosh darn country, no matter if the socialist Jew or otherwise soulful degenerate is unwilling. The Safeguarding America's Fundamental Exceptionalism Act is aborted. Vice President Byers, however, our future soul destiny is not quenched beneath the suffocation of virtue that liberalism exists, as President Yaki declared, as he paced the Oval Office, ending by staring out of the windows where a group of protesters turned to cheering as they learned of the Safe Act's failure to pass through Congress. Vice President Byers turned my office phone to the number of the Capitol Guard. The Devil's Horns deadlocked for now. Unfortunately, we were not able to pass that act. But unfortunately, we probably will not be able to because there was no real saying in which we could. So the austerity, bears of the flame, the safe act, yeah, the common man. So that is totally okay. But regardless, I believe that is pretty much all that we have for President Yaki. A mere glimpse into what could be, or what will be, part of his presidency when TNO2 comes out. But regardless, if you enjoy this uh, video, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow in a different video. Thanks for watching. Have a great Yaki filled rest of your day. Alright everyone, so not quite done yet. So I didn't realize that we actually failed to pass the act, but this time I made sure that we did. 
one giant step, or great step, into the breach. Thun thunder rumbled amidst the skies of DC as the capital of that last bastion of democracy felt the churning rage of the thunderous old gods as they peered down from the heavens and rained all form of punishment upon the ground below as cold winds, cracks of lightning, and endless rains fell. Nevertheless, such distractions failed to rip the steel-eyed gaze of President Francis Pakayaki away from the report on his desk as the bushel face of his vice president came in unannounced. Well, it looks like we have some good news coming in this morn, said Vice President Byers. I understand the true first step into the coal of the culture disease has begun, Vice President Byers. This engine of liberalism, this distorter of the morally superior, finally shredded apart amidst the powerful claws of Western civilization, like the muck it is, President Yucky declared monogulously, as he scrapes a piece of dirt from beneath his finger with his sharp thumbnail. Vice President Byers, I implore you to allow yourself to be seated for the world's next spun few minutes and listen towards the successes of the American National Vanguard against the likes of the tumors of democracy. The words floated around the mind of the Vice President, and while his superior's rhetoric typically left him with a sense of pride pinned by a dosage of dread, he used the opportunity to listen in as President Yucky flipped open the radio signal. The crackling emanating throughout the silence of the two men only fell broken by President Yucky's next words. Commanders of the police units stationed across the country, I hereby, under the powers vested within me by the spirit of America, under which our Congress has granted me legislative authority unto declaring authorized for the execution of Order 2237, allowing for the since forth enforcement of the Safeguarding America's Fundamental Exceptionalism Act, or the SAFE Act, against all potentially law-breaking degenerative media sources from across the country. Protect America's spirit at all costs. The President then offered a rare glimpse into his smile to his Vice President. As he stood up forwards, upwards, wandered towards the window behind him in the Oval Office and stood, arms folded behind his back. Civilization constructed and construed. Very nice. My apologies, but now this will conclusively end this episode. Thanks for watching. Have a great Yaki-filled rest of your day again.